Hello, my name is Jonathan Reeves from Innovative Vectorworks BIM. I'm a Vectorworks and Twin Motion specialist, and today I want to look at some of the new features of Unreal Engine's Twin Motion. So, just start by saying if you go to the Unreal website and go to the Enterprise section, down at here we've got Twin Motion. And the great thing with Twin Motion, it's amazing real time rendering software for Mac and PC. But as you can see, you can now get it for free until November. And then I believe there'll be a new paid version coming out sometime. Um, not, haven't got any details on that, but I'm pretty sure the uh, improvements will be pretty amazing. So let's wait and see. But one of the really great things about the new version is they've done a couple of updates already. Okay, and if you kind of scroll around the website, you'll begin to see a little bit more information once you've downloaded. Um, one of the things I really like is the fact there's a new plugin for basically SketchUp. And also, um, I find Vectorworks works really well as well. So, if we have a look at the Twin Motion plugins, you'll see um, you've got ARCHICAD, you've got Revit, SketchUp, Vectorworks hopefully is coming soon. And we've got for Windows or for Mac. That's the beauty with Twinmotion. It's cross-platform rendering, real-time rendering. So if we go to the 3D warehouse for SketchUp, you're going to find a whole bunch of models that are available free of charge. And there's some, you know, okay stuff. There's some really cool stuff as well. <clears throat> this is a, a building that I've always admired by Richard Meyer Architect. So I've downloaded this. And this is what we're going to have a look at in today's tutorial. Um, so I'm going to turn the webcam off now. Just going to thank you for watching the channel and I really hope you enjoy the video and subscribe. We've got some great tutorials on the channel. So I look forward to uh, hearing what you think of the, the new features of the latest update of Twinmotion. Please post some comments. Thanks guys. Okay, so here we can see I've imported the model from uh, the SketchUp warehouse. I've just opened it up in the SketchUp file. You can see uh, a few textures not looking brilliant, but generally it's quite a nice model. And the thing is, it's fairly sort of low polygon in terms of size. Now, you'll notice that if I go to extensions, I've got the Twin Motion extension loaded with a few different options. But you'll also notice we've got some buttons here. So it's really straightforward. If you would like to kind of get this into Twin Motion, let's just have a quick look at the settings. Um, so before we do this, I don't want to collapse by material. I'm just going to say no collapsing at all. This will give me more flexibility later. I'm going to optimize the model and I'm going to fix any UV textures as well. So just check out a couple of the settings before you go ahead with the export. Okay, so when we're ready, we just simply click on the export button. Um, the first time we do this, you can see it's got the Twinmotion uh, interface here already. Um, I guess this is going to be a new project. That later on, we can update an existing project. So let's click OK. You'll see immediately um, we change over to Twinmotion, and that was it. I mean, here we go. We've got the model imported in to Twinmotion environment already. Now, you can see Twinmotion is a really nice real-time rendering software. Um, we've got some really nice sort of textures and a few things going on already. But let's see what we can do in a fairly short space of time to make this model pretty, pretty awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my materials. I'm going to go to ground nature and let's kind of drag some grass onto the model. I'm also going to go over to the right side and you can see here is like our organizational palette in a way. So I'm going to click four on the keyboard and basically I'm just going to kind of move this model up and down a tiny bit. Let's see if that's possible. In fact you know what I'm going to click on the ground. I'm just going to move that groundscape up a tiny bit just so it kind of sits a little bit closer. Okay so next we're going to kind of start to populate the model a bit more. Um, I think we need to work on the grass and the background. So we'll go to the context tab and let's have a look at the background and let's decide what kind of context we would like. Got a few different ranges in here. That's pretty cool. I quite like the idea of <clears throat> this one here and we'll kind of rotate that around. <clears throat> so we'll have that <clears throat> in the background as a sort of cityscape. Okay, so let's now go back to the materials library. We're going to go to vegetation and we're going to go with trees. So there's a really nice library of trees that ship with the product. You can see we can scroll through. If you prefer to open up the window, you can have it three wide as well. Makes it a little bit easier to see. And we can close this down on that side anytime we need to. Um, what do we want to go for? So I kind of like the, uh, these are nice, the orange tree. Let's have a couple of those. So I've dragged one in, it's pretty small, but let's hold shift down and click on the axis arrow and I can drag one off. You'll see that I can now set the spacing of that to say um, four meters and I could maybe click 
a number of duplicates there to kind of carry on. Uh, let's get rid of that last one. Okay, so let's drag in a couple more trees. Um, let's have a look at what do we want here for this kind of project. I would like to go for something a little bit larger maybe. Let's have a Japanese maple. And let's have that over here aligned with this. And again, we'll do the same trick. We'll hold shift down, drag off a copy. And hopefully we can just copy that a few times. That's cool, nice. Um, another little trick is if you select multiple trees, so with the shift key held down, I've got three different trees there. So now whenever I, let's scroll up a bit and kind of get in the background. So whenever I click, you'll see it will basically place um, a random tree from that selection. So let's kind of give it a few more so you can see what I mean. You can see this is a great way of quickly placing some maybe some background to your model um, when you're not too bothered about exactly what species of tree you've got. And this will place, you know, a random size and variety of trees in a very, very rapid way. That's cool. OK, now there's another really nice thing we can do when we need to create a little bit more context quite rapidly. So we can go through to, let's just make this too wide again, go through to the vegetation tab. Um, under vegetation, you see that you have a bunch of standard, uh, should we say, grass, some trees and some poppies at the moment. There's nothing to stop us from dragging down a few more different types of tree. So if there's a bunch of different trees you would like in your model, just drag those in. Um, just trying to kind of get the right sort of feel for this project. I think that's nice. So I'm going to select these three. And you, over here you've got a diameter and you've got a density. So if you're trying to get quite a few trees, let's make a nice big brush. And basically you see I can spray almost like a little forest of trees quite rapidly just to give our model a little bit of background there. And that's kind of nice. There's no point in kind of putting in more than you need. If I drop the density down, you'll see it places, you know, a lot less dense, just a bit of sort of sprinkling of trees. By the way, if you do need to get rid of those, you click on the rubber and then essentially you rub those out. Okay, these are different from the individual trees. So that one isn't an individual tree. Uh, that one is. That was one that I placed earlier on. So if you click on it and you think, oh, I can't delete it, that's because you placed it with the vegetation brush. So you do need to go back, click on the vegetation, get the root, get the rubber, if you like, the eraser, and then you can rub those out. You see how that works. Okay, cool. Let's get down a bit of eye level. And you'll notice I'm going pretty slow at the moment. So on my keyboard, if I click one, I'll go slow. Two, I go a bit faster. Three, I go pretty fast. So you can control the speed as you're moving through in terms of walk, running, and I think they call it cycling. Okay, so with my vegetation brush, one of the really lovely new features of the latest update of Twin Motion is the grass. Um, Unreal Engine have done a fantastic job improving the grass. I mean, it wasn't too bad before, but you know, it really is nice now. So let's kind of give this model a really nice section of grass. So basically, I'll just click on the brush select my grass and let's kind of go ahead and sort of spray again you can see i've got a bit of a, a low density there which is fine for now let's make that diameter size a little bit smaller and let's increase the density there so as i get a bit closer to the building i want the grass to be a little bit denser and i'm just going to kind of spray that across let's go in there a bit more close can you see the difference you can see the uh, patches of grass um, let's speed that up a bit. Let's go for command T and you can see, yeah, beautiful. Okay, cool. So this is the sort of slightly rougher grass and then it gets a little bit more. So if I go back to my libraries and go to grass, you will see there's a whole bunch of different grasses. Um, so let's go for the lawn. Let's drag that down. Uh, let's kind of get up a bit higher and see if we can kind of paint with some lawn here. Yeah, that's nice. So it's a really nice sort of quite finely tuned type of grass that would be suitable for the, the capped area around this building. Yeah, I like that. That's really nice. Let's do a little bit more around this side here. Um, nothing stopped me from making this brush size quite small. You know, really kind of getting in there to the detail. 
And quite a nice little tip here is, if you go to the organization palette, you can actually turn off the whole model. Um, so I suppose that kind of means that when you're painting, you don't paint onto the surface of that model. So I kind of spraying a bit more grass here. That's kind of nice. Let's get that brush size up a bit more. Um, oh, well, that's pretty big, but it doesn't, doesn't matter too much because the other model isn't visible. So let's turn that back on. And you can see we've done a quite a nice job. Um, I probably need to get my eraser tool and just going to erase some of those little bits of areas where I've sprayed the grass on the, uh, on the patio here. That's no problem at all. You can see it's quite easy just to kind of raise that. And yeah, that's cool. We can always come back and finish this off a little bit later. That's okay for now. I want to show you some of the longer grass. Um, so if we go to, let's get a selection of the longer grasses here, the wild grass, and there's some really nice sort of weeds and tall grass. So let's get some tall grass down here. And let's get down a little bit lower into our model so where the ground maybe wouldn't be quite as well kept let's go for some wild grass so let's go for 100 percent actually no let's go a bit lower let's go about 80 90 percent and let's get this brush size up to maybe 10 meters again so you'll see as i spray it kind of adds the grass over the top of what was there already which is pretty cool so i'm just going to go ahead and save what we've done so far and let's call this Richard Meyer. Okay, cool. So pretty quick to save. Um, let's, yeah, there we go. That's cool. Right, let's get some really nice long grass. So when we're perhaps looking at the model, it would be nice to get down a bit eye level here. Let's get our brush size a little bit smaller. And let's go for it with some nice long grass look at that guys that's absolutely beautiful really is really nice so i'm hoping that once we kind of get down to eye level it's going to look really beautiful i think they've done a cracking job actually um we can also drag in um some individual plants uh it's pretty subtle you can just about see them peeking through there we go yeah that's better isn't it you can just sort of just give it a little bit more variety uh, that's nice. I think these are lovely. And again, we'll do that same little trick here. We'll hold shift down. We'll select a bunch of these. And we'll kind of just click. Yeah, let's get those, those two. Can you see every time I click, I'm getting a, a di different variety. So just putting a little bit of color into the model maybe with some of those, those beautiful violets and poppies. That's cool. Excellent. So it's really fun. Um, we've got some bunch of weeds. Uh, we've got some really tall grass here. Again, look, there's nothing to stop you placing individual piece, pieces of grass, but that is going to take you a while. So I prefer the vegetation brush. Okay, this is looking really nice. So I'm going to go for, um, let's get some rocks. Now the rocks into emotion. I love these. These are really beautiful. Um, let's kind of get something there and let's scale it up. So I'm going to click four is move five is rotate and six is uh, scale and now you can also click on here and do the same thing but if i click on the middle point i'll be able to just scale this whole thing up by maybe two times let's try that again yeah there we go let's sort of scale that up just so it sort of pops up above the grass and if i click four i can actually sort of physically move it up a little bit as well which is nice um so the rocks are beautiful and I would definitely add some of those to your model if uh, if appropriate. Let's get one over there just to give it a little bit of framing. Okay, so I think also you will see um, planting and bushes under here. So let's get a kind of few, you know, a few plants into the foreground as well. This is the area around the project. It's just a, a made up, I'm not doing the real thing. Just to really show you guys how easy it is to bring life to your twin motion models perhaps from SketchUp, Vectorworks or whatever model you're you're using. Okay that's beautiful let's just go ahead and save what we've done so far. So I think next step is let's get into the closer area and let's get some people and a bit of life into the model. Okay so if we go to characters, humans, we can basically do a couple of things. 
So the first thing I can do is just click on a single person and place them into the model. Now you notice what's really nice is each one, even though it is actually the same person, has a slightly different look, um, a slightly different outfit and a slightly different pose. So those are all the same guy. They're all Adil. Uh, the thing is you can change the pose. You can give them sort of different, um, you know, different sort of poses and different animations as well. So that's pretty cool. And you can even sort of change the color of that preset. So that's, you know, even though that's one person, you get, you know, a bunch of different sort of settings. We can do the same little trick here. We hold shift down. We can select a group of four people, perhaps, or three people. And then every time I click, it will place one of those at random, different orientations, different poses, different people. So that's pretty cool as well. And then a really nice aspect of Twinmotion is the fact you can basically go back and there's some groups and groups. We've got groups anywhere from two to three. Just have a little group of two. Just look a bit more natural perhaps. You know, some couple of kids there playing with each other. And um, let's go to the group here, bigger group. Uh, let's put a bit more in the distance. We're getting quite busy this, this scene, but you know, I think it's nice to bring it to life a little bit. And then finally, let's have a quick look. You know, you've got some really big groups here. I'm not going to go for those. That's plenty. So let's save what we've done so far. And uh, let's have a little explore of the model. Okay, cool. I'm going to do a bit more work here. So I'm going to go to materials. Um, I'm going to go to ground. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go to some stone. Let's see what we've got in the libraries here. I think it might be nice to have some kind of stone floor maybe. Um, let's have a look some sandstone. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's not looking bad, but the texture is a bit big. So I'm just going to click on the scale bar and just scale that texture right back. Brilliant. That's really cool. Okay, fantastic. So what do you guys think so far? Looking quite interesting. I think it could do with a little bit more life and maybe a little bit more animation as well. There's plenty more work I could do um, to keep working on this model. Um, you know, I could go in and add more detail, but what I'm really going to do now is just click on the context button and go to paths. Okay, cool. So I think if I kind of zoom out, just so I can kind of get a nice path in here, I'm going to go for a uh, character path. I'm going to click on the pen button and I'm going to start a path walking along here, just on the inside of these trees. Um, that's cool. Uh, let's just kind of go on to the patio area here. I might have to move some of those people so they don't get bumped into in a minute. Uh, here you can see every time I click I essentially get a, a kind of vertex if you like. And uh, see if we can just pan around this building. Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty good. So you can pan around while you're in the middle of the operation. Just makes it a little bit tricky to get behind sometimes. And when we're ready, let's click and escape. So basically what you're going to see is twin motion will start spawning in some people. Okay, so let's go in and just uh, let's just move these guys that we placed in slightly the, the wrong place earlier. And that's the beauty. It's so easy to make these changes. It really doesn't matter too much. Okay, so if we click on the path, you can see we've got various options. We've got different types of people. We've got different types of, um, should we say office, travel, beach, so on. And we can kind of make the path a little bit wider if we wanted to, two meters, so they're a bit more variable. And you've got the density. Let's, <laughs> let's slide it up a bit more. So you can see that's a lot of people walking around, a bit too many. So let's slide that right down. And I think if we're gonna go ahead here and basically, I think we get the density right down, to be honest. Let's go for 10. Okay, so let's carry on. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, that path. That's kind of nice. Maybe we'll have another path, just um, make it look a bit more natural. A um, few people perhaps walking around the other direction. So let's click our path button. I've got a feeling actually that's kind of carrying on with the path that we did before. But if we're careful, that won't matter at all. Have them walking back the other way. 
and just be careful not to <laughs> clash them into each other. Let's go to finish them about there and let's click escape. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's looking nice, it's quite natural. Sometimes you will spot the odd clash, so it's important to move people out of the way um, so they're not bumping into each other. That's these, uh, these two kids here. They were a group, so they kind of moved together. Okay, fantastic. So I'm pretty happy we've got a bit more life into the model. What can we do next? So I think next let's have a look at um, changing the weather in a bit, bit more detail. So I click onto the vegetation tab again. I'm gonna to go to weather. And I always think it looks a little bit unnatural to have perfect blue sky, especially in the UK, uh, often a little bit less than perfect, unlike California perhaps. So I think the next thing we're gonna do is kind of go and create a few stills and some animation. Um, but as I say, um, perhaps, you know, one of the lovely things with Twinmotion, you can really just kind of come back to this at any time and keep going with the model. You can see it's quite feasible for me to even drop in some single bits of sort of long grass if I want to be very precise. In fact, you know what, let's go to vegetation. Let's get a few more flowers. I always love the flowers. And Let's kind of get those, there we go, down at the bottom. Let's drag in some buttercups, some daisies, and I do love the poppies, they're already there actually. So we can select shift, hold shift down. Sorry, on that one actually, let's do on the Mac, it's command, select those three. Click, let's get the density right down so it's not gonna to be too crazy. And let's just kind of see how this looks. If we kind of sprinkle a little bit of a meadow along there with the grass, that's nice, but a bit too intense for me. So I'm gonna get that density right down maybe to 5%. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's what I was after. That's really, really nice. Just to give a little bit of detail in that foreground. Um, I'd like to give a little bit of life to the nature, nature side. So I'm gonna go back to um, my characters and um, we'll go to animals. And there are actually a few little animals that we can use. There's not that many, but there's a few. So we've got some some butterflies. You can kind of drag those into the drawing or the model. And you can see them kind of flying around in the foreground there. And maybe in the distance, um, we can see if we can get some birds in. So let's kind of get those maybe way up in the sky, just to give a little bit of distance there. And it, my advice would be to move those a little bit further away from the foreground. They can be a little bit dominating if they're too too close. And also, um, sometimes I kind of scale, scale them, essentially to make them a little bit further apart, those birds. So they can be, <laughs> they look, kind of look like they're bombarding the, the visitors at the moment. So let's kind of get those a bit further up in the sky. I think they're actually maybe a bit distracting for this model, so I'm gonna get rid of those. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and set some views up. For this, I'm going to go onto the media tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is set some images up. So um, click image, click plus, And there is the first image. Beautiful. If we click on the more button, we can now set a bunch of settings, including the camera size. Um, for really nice quality renders, you may as well go for 4K. Twinmotion is so fast for the rendering. We can change our field of view really easily. So if you want to kind of zoom in a bit more, frame that, that drawing. And I quite like it with this kind of project. You know, architectural projects look great with a bit of perspective correction um, input. We've got a vignetting, which is nice. That's pretty heavy. Um, so it's going to go for fairly heavy vignetting, about 50 on that particular view maybe. So we'll go back to image. Let's pan around to another nice aspect of the, the project. Uh, let's kind of go to view, let's go click, let's get one, so it's going a bit slower. I'm just using the keyboard now to, to navigate through. And um, yeah, that's a really nice little view. On this particular view, I probably want to just click for and move this plant out of the way. So I'm just kind of tweaking and refining the view before I save that. That's kind of nice. Um, there's nothing to stop me from doing a little bit more work on this at any time. You know, if it looks a bit bland, I can go and get some bushes, for example. Uh, let's, which is my one that I'm looking for. Yeah, let's go for some of these. That's quite big. So let's go for a cinnamon fern just in the foreground here. And we'll click a few of those just to kind of get a bit of foreground immediately into the model. 
yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to select this one and I think I'm going to delete that one. Okay, so I really like the look of that. I'm going to click on the uh, return button to go back to my media mode, click create image. And again, let's click more. This time it should have saved with 4K and perspective correction on. So whatever I left on the last image, it's changed, but there's nothing to stop me from adjusting this if I would like to. That's beautiful. And basically, if I just want to tweak that view ever so slightly, let's go down a bit, a little bit lower to a bit more like kind of eye level. That always looks nice. And just frame that a bit more horizontally. Yeah, that's beautiful. Lovely. I'm happy with that. So I go back to image and to click, well, basically click on the update button. So that's now updated that image. And I think also one thing I will do on this particular one is just show you that each image has its own sort of individual weather settings. So maybe I want a little bit sort of slightly cloudier day for that particular one. Excellent. That's cool. So let's click here. Let's click update one more time. So here's my first view. Here's my second view. I like that. Let's kind of set up one more view and then we'll do some animation. So if I click two, it will go a bit faster. Let's pan around and look at this part of the, this view of the project. And let's see if we can kind of get that framed up nicely. Yeah, that looks really, really nice, that view. Maybe going a little bit closer this time. Um, let's do a tiny bit more work. We'll go back to vegetation. At any time, that is the beauty kind of spray a little bit more grass just here in the foreground as we've sort of decided that we are going to go with this view here. Let's move back a bit here. Yeah, and let's go for a little bit more wild grass, a little bit longer grass, just in that sort of slightly distant areas here. Yeah, cool. And let's get a few more flowers into the model to give it a little bit of life and a bit of colour. Let's get that density up, actually. That's... Uh, Probably why the grass was a little bit patchy there. Wow, yeah, that's that's pretty rapid, isn't it? Beautiful. Right, okay. So let's go back to our rewind back to image mode. And let's set up this new image here. So I really like the look of this, something like that. Let's click one so it's going nice and slow. We can kind of walk very slow. I love that. Yeah, that's beautiful. So let's quick create image. Let's have a look at the settings on this one. So for this one, um, I would like to put some depth of field on. Depth of field will give me a really nice sort of blurring of the background. And if I want to, I can kind of set the distance so that I can actually blur the foreground as well. So if we have a pretty low distance in there, maybe about 10 meters. Just type it in. You can see the foreground's blurred. The background is blurred as well and I can also adjust what we call the radius okay so that's nice there's some really nice settings there I can see a couple of little uh, errors this is often the way you work into emotion so I just need to kind of get some of that grass I think it was that one and get my brush smaller and basically just erase some of the grass that I drew onto the patio by mistake yeah, that's pretty cool. Do a little bit of tidying up there. Other than that, I'm very happy with the image. Um, I think maybe I will adjust the time. So let's just save our model. Go to time and let's kind of slide that down a little bit. So you can see it's really easy to do in real time. Um, we can just adjust the time there nicely. And if you go to a certain point, you will notice the sky goes dark and the stars start to come out at a certain point once it gets dark enough yeah that's nice but we would need a bit of lighting into the model if uh, if we were going to go for an image like this so let's have a look and see how that would work so I'm going to click back on my rewind go to lighting first of all I'm just going to drop in an omni light into the model and let's move that up and let's get the should we say the radius much bigger so it's kind of having a bigger impact. And the intensity, I can kind of slide up a little bit more as well. Now there's no shadows on there until I tell it to be. So if we want some shadows, we click on. 
And we can also have something called day cycle. So when you click the day cycle, um, basically it will only turn on when it's night time. So that's pretty cool. So after a little play with the nighttime lighting, I've decided um, we're going to go back to something a little bit more daytime. But as I say, it's very easy to adjust the time of the day, you can see. And if you want to, if you click more um, and you go to lighting, shadows, you can basically kind of harden up or loosen up the shadows. Can you see as you play around with the different numbers there, you get quite sort of hard, um, hard line shadows. So depending on the kind of look you're going for, that's, um, that's what I would recommend. Now you'll notice the quality settings, um, I've just dropped them down. So I'm just going to kind of show you where that is. That's in preferences, quality. Um, you might as well click automatic and see what your computer can handle. Um, I'm going to go for high, which is what I was on to begin with. And the high settings are nice. It might be a little bit less responsive. This is an, an iMac here. Um, it's a few years out of date, but um, it's okay. Not bad. Good. So let's go back. Let's click record on that particular image. And basically, let's save what we've done once more. Let's show you guys how to set up some animation. So we'll click back onto the media tab. We'll go to video. We'll click create. And we'll click create here. So this has created the first frame. So what I can now do is kind of move my view along and click plus. And let's move along again. And click plus. And let's pan along just sideways a little bit, which is really nice, and click plus. So I've got a four, four different frames, pretty straightforward. If I rewind and I click play, Twinmotion will kind of preview through for you. So it allows you to sort of see if the movement is um, natural. Uh, if you're happy with that, you can kind of render out that final animation eventually. Um, one other really nice thing that I can do is kind of make any tweaks I need as we go. Um, basically, we can kind of click update. So actually, I didn't want to do it on that one. I just want to basically do it on this last frame here. I just want to kind of tweak the view slightly lower and I just click update and you'll notice that it will kind of change all of the frames ever so slightly uh, so it interpolates between them. Now the clip length at the moment is only 10 uh, seconds so I would recommend for nice smooth clips you want to kind of get that up to 20-30 seconds. Let's have a quick rewind and play through that. Yeah you can see the movement is nice and smooth. Obviously when you do the final render it will be a lot uh, a lot smoother than this already. That's good. So I'm going to basically do a really nice little trick here. I'm going to go to uh, the start time and just change that time of day so it's a little bit earlier in the day. We go to the end time and we're going to kind of swing around to a little bit later in the day. So now what you see is as we go through the day, uh, it's kind of, you know, the shadows are moving around, just sort of emulating um, some changing atmosphere. Now, obviously, you know, that wouldn't work at this sort of speed with people moving around, but it's just a nice little effect I thought I'd show you guys. Excellent. I'm pretty happy with that clip. Um, let's go and set up one more clip. So basically, oh, I will just click more while I'm here. Go to camera settings. And again, I can render that out at full HD. Um, but actually, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go for 4K. We've got the perspective correction on which is good that's fine so let's go ahead and create one more clip i wonder whether we can kind of get anything good from a different angle let's kind of go a little bit further around here um whoa that's pretty fast so let's move back a bit here you can see controlling the speed is really quite important yeah that's a nice view let's get right down at eye level there yeah i kind of like that I think we need to change the time of day though. So let's create clip. Let's adjust the start time. That's it. That's lo looking a lot nicer. Um, and let's kind of slowly move forwards to the model. So we'll click forward a little bit. And we'll click. Let's go back a tiny bit actually. Let's click plus. And let's move in a little bit closer. We'll click plus again and a little bit more this time we'll kind of pan around get down a bit more eye level let's have a look at how this clip looks so we're kind of quite far away zooming into the building a little bit here 
and that's kind of nice as we go around yeah i like that that's cool okay so let, let's start to sort of pan around this uh this area here that'll do let's click plus obviously the further you move the should we say the faster it will go so the trick is if you want really nice smooth animation you've either got to add more keyframes or basically just think about how far you move between the views So one more. Just want to get around to see this building in almost pure elevation. Um, just so we can get a really nice view of the building in the round. Yeah, it looks really nice with that lighting like that. Let's kind of get down a little bit more eye level. Looks beautiful with that, that new grass I'm trying to show you. That's a lovely view. There we go. So that's a good one to finish on. Um, okay, so we're definitely going to need more frames in there. So let's get 30 frames. Sorry, 30 seconds. And let's have a quick preview. I like the look of this. It's looking really, really good. Um, so we can also do a couple of really cool tricks. And we can basically click more. And as well as changing the weather at any time, if I really wanted to, I could kind of make it kind of a bit more bit more atmospheric let's go for let's go for a rainy view you know that's kind of a nice fun fun thing to do let's go to lighting because I've made it rainy um, I can basically you know brighten up the view a little bit give it a bit more ambient light and um, there isn't really a lot of Sun so that's not really going to do a lot and again I can adjust the shadows a lot, little bit but it's very overcast if we go back to um, visual effects under here we've got some filters so I can go to color gradient here and basically I can take the saturation it's really quite nice sometimes to do like almost like a little black and white video so I'm going to render this out in black and white so we've got our clips uh, let's just review those we go to the media tab we've got images we've got one lovely image here let's just do a final little tweak on that one this is what I love about twin motion at any time you know it's not like you have to stop working you can kind of just do these final little tweaks at any time just when you come back to something you'll often see something that you just want to adjust and make these changes that's nice I'm pretty happy with all of that I'm just going to twist that one slightly down again and click update very good so I reviewed those in fact I will just do one more image um, simply because I want to show you something to do with the filters so let's kind of get around to maybe this view here. Yeah, that's good. Let's update that one. Let's click more. And we'll go to the visual effects. There is a kind of cool feature here called clay render. If you turn that one on, then basically everything goes um, sort of white card model type of thing. Um, my tip here would be, you know, you really want to kind of get that back to a whitish color, not a bluey color and obviously that's quite bright so you're going to want to have a little play around with the settings here and what you can do which is cool is you can tell it to basically not do things like glass or other items so other items is the project but all the people so for example you could keep all the people the landscape um, vegetation let's turn those off water let's just keep the characters let's just see how that looks yeah that's that's interesting a much more abstracted look and again if we go to um, filters under here there's some fairly crazy uh, but quite interesting sort of like sketchy filters that we can kind of put onto the drawing and there's a whole bunch of those that you can have a little play with I quite like this one the cross hatching um, so if I wanted to I can render that out either, either as an animation or a still so let's click update that's updated those settings so you can see each view has its own settings it's completely independent for weather time date everything um, you would like to change it's real-time rendering so it's very easy to just adjust make these final tweaks before you're ready to go to render so let's go for it let's go for these images uh, so I click on the output tab um, I'm going to go to image and you can see I can click and tick my three four images here that I would like to go for 
I haven't done Paramas today, but maybe in another video we'll get onto that. Let's go to video. We've got a couple of clips here. Okay, fine. And just before I go ahead, I'm just going to save the model. I'm going to click export and this is going to take a little while. So I'll come back and show you how the final output looks a bit later. So I hope you've really enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and we'll be making lots more videos in the future. And we're getting really hyped for the next release of Twinmotion. Um, no information on that at the moment, but you know, let's let's kind of get it out there and see how much we can get out of the free version. And it'd be quite exciting to see what they bring in in, in the new one in November. Um, so I look forward to hearing from you guys with any questions or any comments in the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>